Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories, let's start to story. Aite for telling my former friend turned sister-in-law that I'm done being her emotional support after she betrayed me. I, 25 um, had a huge crush on my childhood friend, Emily, 26. As a teen I was super shy and awkward so I never made a move. I just hoped that someday Emily would realize I was the guy for her. The only person I ever confessed my crush to, though it was pretty obvious, was my brother Liam, 28 um. Liam was way more confident and smooth with women so I turned to him for advice about Emily. Given the situation at the time, you can imagine my surprise when I caught Liam and Emily hooking up. I know that she technically was never my girlfriend, but it still hurt and I felt betrayed. It turns out they hooked up at a party once and liked it so much that they kept meeting up whenever no one was around. I felt completely sick and basically distanced myself from Emily after that, which was awkward since we had a lot of classes together and worked the same shift at our part-time job, a job Emily frequently depended on me for rides to. I wanted to remove Emily from my life completely, but during the summer of our senior year she and Liam sat me and my parents down to explain that Emily had gotten pregnant and they were planning on keeping the baby. My parents weren't happy, and I just went up to my room and locked myself in. All I could think was, well crap, now she's never going to go away. I purposely transferred to an out-of-state college to avoid being home as much and lied about being stuck in traffic when I missed Emily and Liam's wedding. I also showed no interest in my niece, Daisy 8, though I still try to be polite when I'm around them. Recently, Emily's father passed away, and she's been struggling because, despite him not being around, she always longed for a relationship with him. When we were kids, I remember being a shoulder for Emily to cry on whenever she was sad about her dad, and I guess she was hoping for that kind of comfort from me now. She kept reaching out, so I finally let her vent one day, but maintained a silent and formal demeanor. After spending about an hour crying, I offered Emily some water, and then she asked why I was being so cold, knowing how much she needed a friend right now. I calmly but firmly told her that we were just kids back then, and if she wants that level of emotional intimacy, she needs to go to my brother, her husband, because I stopped being her comfort person a long time ago. Emily cried even more, left, and has managed to get Liam, my parents, Emily's mom, and some mutual friends to call me up and tell me I'm heartless and spiteful. I can honestly say that I'm over Emily now, but that doesn't mean I'm willing to be as close to her as I used to be. So, I tell Ida had to step away and after looking at the comments and DMs, I just want to clarify a few things. I'm not an incel. Did I exhibit some nice guy traits as a teenager? Yes. As an adult I now realize that Emily doesn't owe me a romantic relationship. I was more angry at my brother than at Emily because he was my brother and knew how I felt. I don't see how me not taking an active role in the life of a child I didn't father is me punishing anyone. I say hello and give gifts on Christmas and holidays. Emily is married, so I find it odd that she would seek emotional support from someone who isn't her husband. Yes, I did give my condolences when I found out about Emily's father because it was the polite thing to do. Then she started trying to call me to talk about it. Emily and I haven't had meaningful contact since high school, partly because she was busy getting ready to be a mom and I was hurt and trying to get over her. No, Liam and I aren't close anymore either. Ida 2, additional information due to word count. I have a girlfriend, and from what I can tell, we're both very happy. My girlfriend knows about my former crush on Emily. And, I have friends who are women. I believe people of the opposite sex can just be friends when they're adults. Despite everything, I did learn to be more forthcoming with my feelings, which is why I told Emily that I can't be her comfort person. Although I admit there could have been a better way and timing to communicate that. Update. After stepping away and seeing the thousands of comments in Reddit's verdict, I can accept that the way I told Emily that I couldn't be her comfort person anymore was wrong, especially the timing. I don't regret being honest about where I stand with her. I am truly over her and happy with my girlfriend, and I would never choose Emily over her. I don't see any reason to rekindle a friendship with Emily to prove anything to anyone. My brother betrayed me. He knew how I felt and still pursued Emily, and I refused to ever be close with him again over it. That is my boundary, and so far it's been working out well for me. Aite for not letting my sister eat dinner after she ruined it with maple syrup and coleslaw sandwiches. So like I mentioned, I hosted this big family gathering and went all out with the menu. I wanted to impress everyone with my cooking skills and share a meal that I'd put my heart and soul into. I had coleslaw, fruit salad and meatballs made from scratch, using a secret family recipe. Plus, I cooked up some spaghetti to go along with it, 
keeping it separate from the meatballs. The goal was to keep everything tasting just right and not have any flavors mix in a way that would be less than delicious. Everything was going according to plan until my sister showed up. She's 26, and let's just say, she has a bit of a history of doing things her own way, which can be interesting. She arrived early, and I was glad to have an extra pair of hands in the kitchen. I told her she could help out, hoping she'd be a nice addition to the kitchen crew. I was expecting she might chop some veggies or help with the sides, but what happened next was anything but typical. When I came back into the kitchen, I was hit with this bizarre, almost sickly sweet aroma. It didn't take long for me to figure out that the source of this smell was my sister, who had decided that pouring maple syrup into the spaghetti and meatballs was a brilliant idea. She mixed the syrupy concoction into the bowl of pasta and meatballs, making a mess that was both visually unappealing and stomach-churning. I was in shock. I asked her, what the heck did you do? She looked at me with a totally innocent expression and said, I thought syrup on the pasta made sense. Pasta is a carb like pancakes and meatballs are red meat like bacon, so it should taste good. I was speechless. I mean, who does that? Mixing syrup into a savory meal like spaghetti and meatballs is a recipe for disaster, not deliciousness. I tried to remain calm, but inside I was fuming. I told her, no, that's not how it works. The combination was beyond bizarre and ruined the meal I had worked so hard to prepare. I was faced with a choice. Either let this disaster continue or salvage what I could. I asked her to make up for her mistake by preparing something else, but that didn't go smoothly either. She decided to use Wonder Bread, peel off the crusts, and slap some coleslaw onto it, creating what I could only describe as a coleslaw sandwich. It was a valiant effort, but definitely not a substitute for the ruined dinner. At this point, I was losing my patience. I asked her to keep our guests occupied while I scrambled to boil some new pasta. Making fresh meatballs from scratch would take too long, and I was determined not to waste more food. I finally got the meal back on track and served it, but the damage was already done. When we sat down to eat, my sister started making passive-aggressive remarks about not getting to eat the same meal as everyone else. I finally had to tell her outright that she had ruined the dinner with her syrup experiment. My 18-year-old brother, who had been relatively quiet throughout the chaos, asked what happened. I explained the whole situation, including the syrup and the coleslaw sandwich. My brother's reaction was a mix of sympathy and disbelief. He winced and said that even though her culinary experiment sounded terrible, it was pretty harsh to not let her join in on the meal and to make her eat a sad, makeshift sandwich. I was taken aback by his response. I'd been so focused on salvaging what was left of my meal and managing the situation that I hadn't fully considered how my actions might be perceived as cruel. The whole situation has me second-guessing myself. I wanted everything to go smoothly, and I put a lot of effort into making a meal that everyone would enjoy. It's frustrating to have that effort undermined by a well-meaning but misguided attempt at cooking. But at the same time, I don't want to come across as unforgiving or unkind. So, Reddit, what do you think? Was I in the wrong for not letting my sister eat the meal and making her eat the coleslaw sandwich? Or was my reaction justified given the circumstances? I'm genuinely looking for feedback on whether I handled this situation appropriately or if I should have approached it differently. Edit just to add some context, I'm 24, my sister is 26, and my brother is 18. This whole fiasco has me feeling pretty conflicted, and I'd appreciate any advice or perspective on whether I was too harsh or if I had a right to be upset. Thank you for listening to today's story. Have a nice day.